Life operates by the spatial orchestration of proteins. At PixelGen, we have developed molecular pixelation that analyzes this in a completely new way. Previously, it's been studied with microscopy, which has limitations of light and taking pictures. That means you can't measure as many things as you would like and as many samples as you would like. But with molecular pixelation, you can measure hundreds of proteins simultaneously and obtain their relative location on these cells, which will be very useful for the emerging field of spatial proteomics. When I met Simon first time and he told me about this idea, so as a scientist myself, I know advanced science is on the basis of seeing things. And I have been always caught up on the idea of counting things with DNA. And he told me like we could recompose this puzzle of millions of pieces of DNA. And I was immediately caught. I thought like we need to do that. There are, of course, a lot of challenges in developing a new technology. And I think breaking down each problem into smaller pieces and then trying to you know, design well-controlled experiments to understand each piece individually has been a successful approach for us. Imagine a ball as a cell. Around this ball, you have hundreds of different proteins that regulates the cell's activity and their spatial relationship to each other especially governs the activity. First, we bind to each protein we want to detect an antibody carrying a DNA tag, and then we add a DNA pixel that co-localizes a number of these DNA tagged antibodies with each other. Last and third step, we unite the DNA pixels with each other, forming a PCR amplicon that we can amplify and sequence with next generation sequencing. A software algorithm then figures out from all this DNA sequence where the proteins are in relation to each other on a single cell. This allows us to ask much more interesting questions from the data, not only if a protein is present, but also what other proteins are next to it and how is the distribution of each protein across the cell surface. So this hopefully will enable researchers to gain much more interesting information that's not really possible now using current technologies. Our hope by making this software and this data open access is to basically crowdsource innovation. There is this idea that by making resources available, the community can fit itself and then advance at a much faster pace.